that the guy is a thief. And you know what's in the talk. Ayu came out and said, Wiki is just angry. Eh? Eban bear. Wiki is just angry. The hundred million he's talking about. Yes, one governor gave us. We use that one to hire a cabin crew department for office. Then we, you will hear them now. I'm gonna you're gonna hear them. Wiki made them to give press conference and say, no, no, it's no be like that. In fact, eh, because we don't get any money, eh, PDP no get any money. Can you believe that? They have uh, they have 20. How many states do they have in Nigeria? I think they have uh, 17 states, I'll be 18. Eh? 18 states, even after they lost power. Now, you know, make the money, share the money. Now, PDP, PDPs share the money. So, party chairman said, no, Atif could advise that we should go and take one billionaire loan. Not that we should, I should go and collect money from anybody. He said, Atif could advise me. He said, we needed money. Okay. And Atifku said, why don't you go and take a loan so that when you sell form, presidential form, governorship, all the form, eh, you can pay back your loan. So we didn't take the loan, no. But one governor gave us 100 million. And we, you know what I mean? Are you sha in what Yoruba we call Ibaka? Are you sha don't they car? Now we can call Samo. So all of you, when see they believe, say you are going to have it. Wait till you go get me, say, last, last, eh? The north go hold that Tifku. Uh, the east, they go hold uh, Obi. And uh, us in the west, eh? we go have to deal with the unfortunate Kalu. I know that won't last. I'm just saying, you know, in your decision, I'm not saying that's going to be us after all. Because in your decision, that will then give you the picture. That picture that says, we can actually save ourselves all this madness, Sha. Yeah? Make everybody just stay on day in day. So day, day your day, there. Make a day my day here. Everybody just day in day, there. And you will now see that uh, all this kind of hatred, the, oh, you know, they won't be there. I mean, they won't, I believe, strongly. Here is how you and co. We no collect any money. Uh, we key. Eh? We key. You, 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 the coolest that be on my job, job. You push us outside like uh, a days baby. Listen to them. PDPO is not very sunk. He worth a woman drink only the joke. What you know, at you know, at you know, Jacob, uh, new one at you know, at you know, you and Jackie, uh, are gonna do look who couldn't see me. One in this me. Here is the start. Um, this is actually a vision of the BOT of which I am a member. I'm only a member of the BOT. And when my chairman talks, I'm not supposed to say anything. But since these allegations have persisted, I want to take this opportunity to clear the when the first allegation was made, I decided not to respond because we don't want to encourage our concessions in the party. However, I want to make it clear that at no time did I, as the national chairman of this party, collect any one billion naira from anybody. When we came in and the party had funding difficulties, the current presidential candidate suggested that the party should take a loan of one billion from the bank. And the owner of that bank also was an influential member of the party. He has left the party. But what we discussed with him, we discarded the idea of taking a loan. And the party never took any loan or any money from anybody. And I, as a person, never collected one billion from anybody. Any money advanced to the party was declared before the National Working Committee and handed over to the treasurer of the the party's accounts are straight, they are up to date, and we 
were promised to present the party's accounts at the end of the year. On today's allegation, luckily, I have fully briefed the BOT that one of our governors made a contribution of 100 million for the revival of the People's Democratic Institute, which was housed in the Port Academy. And I explained to them that we hired an appropriate place in Asokoro, we have renovated it and we have furnished it. Two or three days ago, we went there to inspect the place. And the National Working Committee decided that even before commission, we should invite the governor in question to come and inspect what we have done with this contribution. I'm happy to state that the National Secretary of the Party has since written a letter to that government. The party, either I or the National Working Party, never took any party money to carry out their renovation. In fact, we have not even exhausted that 100 million, which was donated by one of the governors. The consistent attack on my person since the end of the convention on 31st of May. I have refrained from reacting as the father of the party. I felt I should encourage reconciliation. But where it touches on my personal integrity, or which even my own family members have brought into play. I appeal to such people to desist from trying to malign my character or bringing my family into party affairs. I never collected one million from anybody and the 100 million that was donated by one of the governors was judiciously used for the purpose. Just watch what will happen. Very soon, you will see politics. Do not panic. Do not uh, panic. If they don't believe, if they don't believe in you, leave them. It's not. True. Don't go and beg. Are you beggars? No. You cannot. Even the beggar said, "God, I will just beg you to stop today." Do you understand me? As you have been begging, say, God, I beg the love. Today, this begging will uh, stop. stop. And I say, have you come here today? The begging has uh, stop. Melembe. 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 They will see us very soon. I thank you and God bless you. <laughs> that is said uh, the PDP. And that is why Tif Numbu told the Yorubas, Yoruba Lukon. And now, it seems that uh, let's like say this southern Nigeria is not going to be like how it was uh, in uh, in the past. Atifku just told the northerner, "You need a northerner to survive oh, in Nigeria. You don't need Igbo president. Oh. You don't need Yoruba president. Oh. I think it's only Peter Obi that said that uh, don't vote for me because I'm Igbo. Don't vote for me because I'm uh, Christian or something like that. Vote for me." If you, I don't know, I don't know the code, but I think, but we are waiting for him too. Maybe he too, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. Let's just say what we have heard. Hmm? So as we speak, where a wiki is cooling off in Spain. Well, so I heard anyway, with Sheyima Kindia and others. They have stayed away from Atifku's campaign. 
and the reasons why Atifku is not letting them uh, pursue you right now is because, like uh, this, you remember this song? I'll tell you the story quickly. It's a folklore story, by the way, just, you know. The wife of uh, a chicken uh, farmer was dating a goat farmer, right, secretly. Then, because the goat farmer wanted to keep the wife of uh, the chicken farmer, the goat farmer conspired with others to kill, I mean, I mean the wife of uh, the chicken farmer, the wife of the chicken farmer, uh, told his uh, boy French, so to say, the goat farmer, that if you want to kill my husband, the chicken farmer, just come in the middle of the night, disturb the barn, let all the chicken scream or like, you know, make noise. Once he heard that, he's going to rush out. Once he rush out to kill him, then I will marry you. So the goat farmer and his friends came. They did as they were advised. So they killed the husband. So the wife of the chicken farmer married the goat farmer. It didn't take long. She started dating another person who happened to be a cow dealer. Now, with the same technique, he told him, he said, if you want to marry me, we need to kill my husband. And if you really want to kill him, he loves his uh, goat so much. All you have to do is to come in the middle of the night, disturb the band, and then uh, the goats will start making noise and my husband will rush out. And when he gets out, just kill him. Then I'll marry you. So what happened? The uh, cow dealer and his friends came in the middle of the night to disturb the band. Bah, 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 bah. The cows were crying, screaming, bleating. Bah, bah, bah. The goat farmer didn't wake up. His wife, his promiscuous wife, started, you know, hitting him like, a, wake up, something is going on outside. You need to go and check the barn. And he just busted out like, a, come on, man. Eh? Would you also, would you, would you use the same way we kill the chicken farmer? To kill the goat farmer when I was actually the mastermind? Come on, man. You have to try it harder. I mean, try harder. Do you get what that means? I'll tell you in this context. In 2014, when the likes of Atifku and Gang decided to stop good luck uh, Jolantan from going for second term because Yaradua died and Northern Nigeria didn't complete their own term or time as, you know, the, the sharing formula, North, South, North, South. So Jonathan must be stopped and whatever it's going to take, even with the, as members of his own ruling party, Atifku and other Saraki and the rest, they led a mass exodus of, from PDP, including many, many state governors who followed them to congregate in a court group now known as APC. At the time. So, in order to further weaken Jonathan before they left the party, when they couldn't stop him eh, from being the main candidate, they now said, we need a peace, peace deal. The peace deal is that uh, the party chairman had to go. And they were appoint a, a different party chairman. Jonathan agreed. And that was the genesis eh, <laughs> of his uh, own political demystification. You know the rest. Every one of you are still riffing from that uh, disappointment. How, 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 how this old APC emerged. Yeah. So Atifku is not in power. But he knows the trick very well. He was there when they muted the idea. When they finan I mean, financed the idea and when they executed it, they saw to the end of PDP rule in Nigeria. So how dared uh, Wiki trying to use the same formula for him, even when he's not in power yet, change the party chairman that paved the way for the beating of Wiki? No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Okay, let's have a deal. One, after this election, eh, Ayu will resign. That's when Wiki was like, uh, you guys are not ready. 
no, 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 no. We want him to go now so that uh, we can have this, you know. <laughs> so that's the cat and mouse game there. So by the time you turn left from the Arewa house and you go to Shena Kashim Shetima house, Adina Kashim something, they have a house in uh, Kaduna again. We are El Rufaya, the El Rufaya of Kaduna. Kaduna Little Finger is hosting his annual, you know, uh, charade. He calls it Kad Invest, Kaduna Investment. So people bring money in to invest in Kaduna and all of that stuff. But practically Northern Kaduna, never to the Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna is not part of Kaduna anymore since that uh, little Hitler came on. But you know the drama there today was that Ikoyi Joe Biden, Kolu, who was uh, in Kaduna as well, as the candidate of APC, addressing the supposed members of, you know, and in his own uh, words, I think I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't think I'm so that good anymore mimicking uh, Tifnumbu without listening to him first, right? Let's go to Kaduna, where Tifnumbu was toasting Hell Rufaya, Shele Stupidini, Buhari Pro Max. Many of you will write sorry letter to Bokuari in prison, oh, by the time he ended up in prison, in Ake, yeah? Many, many of you will be writing apology letter to Bokuari in prison by the time call this one, eh? takes over for thinking and doing for thinking and doing now i said something about old age earlier okay all of you are you yeah you mommy and you baba me eh and you eh abia more all over the place. I know many, many of you. Who pray for my yegu? My yegu wa dagba. Ah, wa dagba. I don't know say I share because they know that we. I am so valuable that my God dagba. They are embarrassed wherever they see Kolu. Some of them are, you know. Imagine, imagine you are seventy, right? Usually, right? A seventy-year-old man or 75 years old man or woman, 80 years. I have 80, 90 years old people. My Yegun's diary here. Mama 80. And they are looking at Kolu. And they are like, ah, what's going on? Like, I, I'm still kind of uh, smarter than this person. He's rich, he's down here. Well, I mean, they feel embarrassed for Tifnumbu. So you cannot use a picture, image of a crookedry hmm? as an image of a, what somebody should be like when you grow old. Older people on here are embarrassed for Tifnumbu. They will never let him talk to the media. And whenever they have to show him, is that they are showing him with other refrafs rogues who are licking the asses and looking for the crumbs they want to have there, or they will just give you a kind of a five second, ten seconds video. Mean the guy no go to mess up until they go to Kaduna today. First, they say me they go pray seven seconds so to show you that there is a lie. All the signs of the last time. Proof of life. But when he opens his mouth, even my great grandma, they shake her head like that. Ah! What is wrong with this boy? He's older than me. Like he looks so old. Why is he shake? You know that stuff. I'm talking now from, from what from what old people told me. Aged people. They said, 
no, 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 no. This guy is. Mm. Then in Kaduna, he was pleading with the devil. So that all of you, where they see Bokwari now, they open your mouth, they flex and all of that, eh? With Kolu, I'm coming back. Listen to him. Nigeria need thinkers and doers like Hel Rufaya of Kaduna who have the capacity to make a rotten situation bad. Whatever that means. Listen to him. For thinking and doing. Nigeria need thinkers and doers. And that is, I'm open, openly begging Nasir Erufai not to run away for additional degree. Uh, excuse. <laughs> to, you know, he's going to Cairo, PhD and everything. There are a lot of educated relics. We are not going to let you run away. Therefore, I'm sure that under the able leadership of this governor, not so erroneous, the leadership of the Park and the subsequent administrations in Kaduna will be very successful once the path is free. These states will be turned into a rapid job creation state to you, the Kaduanians. Be sure of the sources of the. <laughs> Hang on, I think uh, there is uh, there is uh, there is one I should have brought on, but hang on, don't go anywhere. Listen to this other guy who was there too, the former Emir. He has something to say which is similar to Omo, for it to work, yeah, for what he said to actually happen. It simply means he's telling them, be prepared for a day that there will be no free money called Nigeria money anymore. You would have to I mean, survive on your own. I'll be right back. More generally, I think states need to free themselves of federal dominance. You have to free yourselves of dominate, of relying on the federal government. Just assume, just assume that you're not going to get help from the center. Okay. Build your infrastructure. As the Kaduna state governor said, build your own power supply. Attract your own investors. Educate your children. Create your own jobs. And we are hoping that investors will continue looking below the radar. I gave the example of Lagos and how well it's done. Kaduna is following that path. The state governments need to continue competing so that people look beyond the macro and know that below the radar there are subnationals that are doing the right thing. And we have to tell that story. As vice chair of Kadipa, I'm proud to be associated with Kadipa. And I'm proud to speak about Kaduna anywhere I go. Because even as a Nigerian, I do not want to bring anybody who will be embarrassed. If I see somebody who says he's thinking of something, I say, come to Kaduna. Or come to Lagos. You go somewhere where you have a story that you're not going to regret. And I think every state needs to start taking that up. And that is the No, 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 no. You get that. Let's go back to Kolu. Just once again, in his words. Just, yeah? for thinking and
are doing. Nigerian need thinkers are doing. And that is, I'm open, openly begging Nasir Erufai not to run away for additional degree uh, <laughs> excuse <laughs> to, you know is going to Cairo PhD and everything there are lots of educated relics we are not going to let you run away your vision creativity and resiliency and turning a rotten situation to a bad one is necessary at this critical time. Uh, that is why we are here today. Turning a rotten situation, a, crit a, 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 you know, a rotten situation to a bad one, that's not a sleep. I mean, they will tell you, ah, El Rufaya has done this or that, can do not, you know, just say what they will, they will tell you. Lagos, the mega city. You know, every time they say, ah, Lagos, ah, oh, Lagos. And then you see the Lagos Ababakus. Tell us your state. We re Kamilu Oshubo. They ask me. Eh, he's asking me, a Lagos landlord, to go back to my state because of Tifnumbu from Iraq. That's what somebody said. My ego just say Iraq I mean, Iraq Jo Biden. Apologies to the Democrats. Who are my, I mean, who are my friends on my Yugun's diary political? Sometimes, uh, hmm? even persuade just day in day, they collect. It's just what Nigeria is. Hmm? I just want to say that. So you get. So, Iraq B. G. B. Kuyijo, Joe Biden knows that uh, Kaduna has become worse. In fact, hmm? Kaduna happens to be one of the epicenter of uh, the Nigeria collusion with uh, armed terrorists in Nigeria. Guess who invited them back? Hell Rufaya of Keduno. So according to Kolu, you are not, we will not let you run away. We will not let you run away, okay? You still have a work to do for us and, you know. Yes, 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 yes. Everybody claps. One clap, are you done on here? Ask those who have been clapping for Bokowari. Some of them know if you clap again, then they wait and they. But it's a matter of choice. Like, again, it's just about choice. But you see, this old China septuagenarians have been octogenarians. The people that will never feature in the future, they are promising you. You can't look around. You can't look me. About we'll break down. You can't look at me after all this you've seen. I've told you you have your choice. Make your choice. Stick to your choice. Choose your poison. Just don't blame anybody for your for your unfortunate choice or and choices you make. Okay. So you can't look at me. That is pointing out all of this expose, so that it can possibly help. With what, if you are thinking right, oh, just if this will help you to think right, I bring to you, or should I say, I brought to you things that the rogues that you call leaders are doing that are also contributory to whatever, you know, what they are doing secretly and what they are saying publicly. When you link all of them together, you realize that uh, none of them is in your own interest, right? Then you look around and you say, God, we shame you. My Yogun Atiku is going to be our next president. Ah, eh? If you get sense of for real, see, listen, I understand that uh, there are those who have left Nigeria. Sure, you get now. They have left Nigeria. Seriously, eh? Majority of us that left Nigeria, we just needed something as an excuse to leave. And we left. And people are still living. You know that. So when people leave Nigeria, and in a way, in their safe haven, they are defending Nigeria from that place. Eh? 
you, you, Stanley, you, that is there in Nigeria. You are there. Like normal person, you are doing, you are hustling your life. I mean, you are doing your stuff. Let's even say you are doing your legit. Okay. But you know it that you would have to like a walk extra and extra to be able to even afford a tiniest comfort as a person. You know that. Now, this is two scenario now. Two people. You, Stanley. I be you. I be. I'm just mentioning names that comes to my head. Or you, Mosun. Or you, I be girly. I be you, boss. Eh? You watching me right now. Pro Atifku. Pro Tifnumbu. The septuagenarians and octogenarians. Demented uh, old men. Oh. Sure you get now, somebody is in America, he's over there, Dubai, South Africa. He attacks my and said, My ego, shut up your mouth. God will shame you. Ashwaju is our next president. He's in South Africa. Sure, you get. Or he's in America or UK. This my ego, you are so useless, very stupid, Yoruba boy. Ashwaju is our next president. He's typing that from uh, America. But you, Mosun, Abi Adija, Kubure. You can't go under the comment and say, facts. You will see, God will shame you. Mayegun, Ashiwaju, Atiku is going to be our president. I am here. The person is somewhere else. So you are in that Nigeria. Everything where they talk about, sometimes when you read them online, you are like, hey, when did this happen? It's here. Now, uh, yesterday, now, where are you? You know, on your data. Need... Sorry, I was trying to manage my data. I didn't hunt my data last night. That's why I didn't know. Oh, since afternoon, yesterday. On the data, Jerry, and get up to date news. See, the people abroad already know everything. They are the ones who told us. So somebody said, My Egun should shut up. You click on their profile. They are living in Florida, America. You from Ajangbadi. Hmm? Okoko Maiko, or from a uh, power line. I'll be under, 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 under tension wire streets, or uh, your tension road, or anything like that. You are now replying under, say, under, that, under that same one. Say, thank you, Jerry, my brother. Facts. No other facts. Thank you. This Mayegun is just a useless person. God will shame him by February. Ha. Egba Mike. If I want to be like uh, the rogues who are leading you and the criminals who are hurting them on, I don't suppose they complain about Nigeria. See, honestly, because ordinary exchange, your exchange rate alone eh, actually makes me a multimillionaire in your Naira, your trashy paper called Naira. You know that? And that's not my own fault. It's the fault of the rogues that you abuse me for. Sure you get. But when you can't say God will shame me, wait to be my own shame. <laughs> you are there in that traffic. Eh? No electricity. You have to go and get your jerry can when you get home to go and, uh, you know, to go and fill your five liter or 20 liter uh, jerry can with petrol and diesel. You have to put on a, an electricity generator for some hours so that you can at least Eh, at least have small comfort before mosquito will do night duty on you. There's somebody who has escaped to South Africa. Eh, somebody who has escaped to Ghana. Somebody who has escaped from all of that to America. Said, man, this my ego no get sense. You wait there, Okoko Maiko. You wait there, Aba, Aba Rodu. You jump on that day, you say, Facts, my brother, facts. What is fact, dear? That God will shame me, that you are going to elect your own uh, slave masters. None of your laws affects me. You know, I can be selfish. I choose not to. None of your laws affects me. None of your police brutality touches me. None of your thieving criminals can touch my money. 
none of your rogue, rogue uh, criminal leaders, right, can sweet talk. I mean, sweet talk me. Do you see how that? that you do you see that distance? So which one be God go shame me? All of you will believe that God go shame those who no allow you make you choose Bokwari peacefully in 2015 and 2019. Now who God the shame now? Now who no get shame? Oh, oh day. If I see what, if I, you know, with the way Nigeria is, the ruin, the more they ruin her, the worse it becomes for you. And the more you want to jack her, I'm not saying you should not jack her. I'm just saying that uh, your prayers, the reason why your prayer know they get answered is because you know get shamed. God is shaming you every day. But so many of you know get shame. I understand. They say you cannot shame the shameless. In the UK, hmm? a liter of petrol is one pound, 79 pence. You can just say, let's just say two pounds. That's that's so many difference about two pounds. Two pounds in Nigeria is 1,700 naira. That is two pounds. That is one liter of petrol in the UK. I know. See you. See you. See you. And we are just buying it for 160 in Nigeria. And it's Farabale. Ah, in Farabale. In this same UK, one hour, if you walk for one hour, eh, the cheapest, the cheapest work you can do, cleaning, cleaning or anything, if you walk for one hour, the smallest you will get is 10 pounds, one hour. The smallest you can get for cleaning eh, in a week is probably 20 hours. Oh, Baba, to ba jakilapa, to korisapa, to more exchange rate. The person who sabi the exchange rate, you feel do 60 hours a week. Now, let's now cut it slow, Abi. Let's say you are doing cleaning, 10 pounds an hour. My brother, hmm? 10 pounds an hour is 8,500 naira your money. If it does five hours in a day, that is uh, 50 pounds. Now, 50 pounds of your money, if I am not uh, mixing them together, I'm going to say should be somewhere around 42,000 naira of your money. That is one day. One day job, five hours. Clean, clean, and all that. So, in a week, let's say 40 hours times 10, that is 400 pounds sterling. In your money, 100 pounds sterling is how much? 87,000 naira. Multiply that by four. You know the mass, Abi? Now tell me, would you be able to afford 10, 20 liters of petrol in a week if you are driving? Would it be difficult to buy a 25 pounds uh, travel card and other things that could help you take you to your work and the rest of that? Would it be hard? Hey, what about our strength? What about, what about it? What about it? In all comparison, eh, it's just that uh, many, many of us who are speaking out, okay, we are not expecting Nigeria to turn to London, to turn to America, to turn to all these places overnight. But at the same time, we can see from far how much poverty that are intentionally being created by these people. And we can watch, we are watching from far too. That not that they are so smart or so good, but because they have managed over time to build a nest of uh, poverty population 
that can that they can always rely upon. All of these are what we are seeing from. Well, you know the end result. The end goal is that none of all their intention actually work for anyone, not even for them. Do you see where we became concerned? Is because when many of us left Nigeria, I don't know about others. So I know those who said, "Omo, as they they leave Muritala, eh? They just pack uh, the sand with them see for outside. Pack them, pack them, pack them inside paper and say." Hey, God, as I they come off of this place, eh? I know they come back again. Guess what? There are people who did that. Now, because of how much shaggy Nigeria, sh some of you left. Well, let's say some of us left with the intention of eh, going back there. Eh? And support our local community, our people, just as we do almost on everyday basis, our remittance, our remittance is more than uh, your national budget in Nigeria. Do you even understand what that means? As your criminal leaders are looting Nigeria, sharing the money, fueling different private jets they use your money to buy, we continue to subsidize the economy of Nigeria through our everyday remittances back into that country. That is why you haven't turned to Venezuela and the rest. But you know one thing, eh? Apart from the fact that Nigeria takes and takes and takes from us, yeah? And we continue to give and give and give back as much as we can. It has now occurred to us that if we continue to just give and give and give, many, many of us and our own descendants, so many of us who left single and then they became established, educated, established, married, with family. We are growing into a very scary future that taking those families back into that Nigeria is now going to be like a lottery. You have to play it out. Should I or should I not? Should I or should I not take them? Should I take one or take two out of four children? Or should I just go alone first? Now, this is the future. Many, many of us from outside Nigeria are saying. You may not be saying that because... Look at it today. The only future many, many young people have in Nigeria today is that jackpot future. God knows how many times many of you who are praying to God to shame Mayegu so that when, so that when Tifunubu become your presidiot, you can sing and praise God that he has shamed your enemy, Mayegu. Many, many of you, your future, your hope actually is in what? To jackpot and leave that uh, hell hole. But when you jackpot finally, eh? Even if you are supporting them from outside Nigeria, the day is coming very soon. Reality, that reality will hit you. Now, when that reality hits you, you're going to remember my ego. Oh, you're going to remember me. Seriously. You will remember me and everything I have said, which is, whatever they say Nigeria is, yes, we are from there. Officially, we are still Nigerians. Abi, all the documents that we have, for those who haven't changed here, so me, I haven't changed because I have not had the chance of changing that, okay? However, yeah, we are still attached to it. Whatever happened to that Nigeria, we are all going to be affected. And in that regard, hmm, one day, just one single day is going to come. You will remember me. Oh, you're going to remember me. And you will remember every word you have heard from me. So, God does no shame for somebody like me other than grace. Haven't you noticed? Left, right, center, around Mayegu, it's been grace. Progress. Hmm? Promotion. And every other thing you can think of. And look at me. I am still here. I'm still young. And I'm still worried that if nothing is done with the way things are going, my own children, eh? They will probably, eh? Never, ever want to ever step at their foot in Nigeria again, and to save them from that stress, to stay, stay. I mean, to save them from that uh, wipe of, uh, you know, one uh, heritage like that. I decided to enlighten so many of you who are alive today, conscious enough, I believe, sensible enough to understand and read beyond what you are seeing today. Understand that the consequences of this whole thing 
that will eventually, I mean, you know, hunt all of us in 10 years, in 20 years. And it's not just going to be all of us, including our own children. Something that the likes of Atifku, the likes of Fetifnumbu, doesn't really care about. Every promise they make to you about Nigeria is going to come back later as the ones they've made to you, even to your parents and to their own parents. And do you really actually want your own children to go through that? So what is uh, God going to shame me for on that? Eh? God has been good to me. Even though some of you don't like me saying that I don't have any religion. You know why? God doesn't have any religion. How about that? God no get religion. And he's been good to me. And I'm worried that no matter how much uh, we work hard, we do our best. No matter how much Nigeria has taken from us and continue to take from us, no matter how much fight we put into it, eh, our children will not be able to survive the Nigeria that many, many of you are indirectly promoting, projecting, simply because of your today and forgetting that tomorrow. You're going to grow old. For those of you who are going to be lucky, all of us, for us who are going to be lucky, I don't know if I'm going to be lucky to, you know, grow in. No, nobody has that say. Just live healthy. Be careful. Don't run into debt. And possibly just enjoy your life. Live every day like it is your last. Do you know that? When somebody said that, I was like, uh, wow. I was just about a seven years old boy when I heard that phrase for the first time. You need to, uh, in fact, I didn't hear it. I read it. I was reading all this uh, junk books and all that back then that I don't even know their names. But in one of them, there's a line that struck me. You need to live your life every day like it's going to be your last. You know what I mean? That means you have to do what is right. Do what is good. Because you may never have another chance of doing that. You know that? And that's exactly how I live my life. I live it like it is the last. So that when you hear from me, there's something that you remember of my ego. And you can live like that too. With that, all other worldly ambition, greed, selfishness that actually makes many of you want to keep up with your oppressors. And so many of you want to even be like them. Forgetting the fact that uh, your oppressors of today, they have their victims, which you are also inclusive, I mean included. Now when you turn to the same oppressors tomorrow, eh, there will also be others who are going to be your victims. So they are your role models, we know. But that is not the future. It is not for anyone. It is going to end all of us. I mean, take your position today, choose what you like, you know, Talk down on anybody. Do whatever you want to do. But as long as you do it for one Nigeria as it is, you are digging the same grave. Trust me, it is getting deeper and deeper. And it is not in anybody's, in anybody's interest. Sadly, some of these guys will be gone when this, uh, when this uh, time bomb is going to explode. So don't ever sit back there in your warped mind and think, Choosing your Atifku, choosing Obi, or choosing uh, Tifnumbu in any way as any direct anything to have on Mayegu other than what I have told you, which is exactly our worry. So many of you don't really care because you don't know. And since you don't know, you don't care. There are many, many of us who know what are the time bomb. That we eventually, if nothing is done, and that is if we don't stop the bleeding, let everybody go their separate ways. I will never stop telling you that. But guess what? I will also never stop encouraging you, all of you who want to save Nigeria. Eh? I will never stop encouraging you never to stop. You have to choke yourselves, sit on your necks, Drag yourselves because everything you do to yourself in my book, the textbook definition of a country that oh, truly is no one.
is a tough one to take in and all the pointers are there but trust me every of your action every of your utterance and utterances they are like my own diary the content the ingredient to prove to so many of you who have been asking for the question or looking for the answers why is everything not working why is nigeria not why god why why you should stop asking why 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 just watch my Egon's diary political and you will understand why then the next question is would you still want same to continue or you would love to choose a new path now at that point right that is where the choice is yours i've done mine you can do your further research on everything i've said but at the end of the day she be not one like Nigeria. he has a way of disappointing the, his believers i trust that figure that it is nigeria if you love nigeria like i believe i love nigeria if you love nigeria and you love nigerians be honest be truthful please be sincere and say it say it with me break it up and save the lives again say it with me if you love nigeria or maybe you don't know that it is actually an act of love to say leave an abusive relationship leave an irreparable relationship leave a deadly murderous dangerous relationship you are advised to stay away so if you love yourself that's what they say yeah if you go out there they will say or if you love yourself if you really really love yourself see um my darling please if you love your life you need to stay out of this relationship now you cannot continue in this abusive relationship it is not good for your mental i mean so your own mental health it is not good for your physical health it is not good for your economic i mean economic health it is not good for you at all and all of this once they become you know uh crumbling listen to me you will have yourself all scattered i think that's what they said to you when you go for a therapy or when you go for a counseling in an abusive relationship if you love nigeria if you love nigerians please say it with me break it up and save lives but if you don't abuse me i'll keep reminding you and thank you very much by the way i think we should take uh, one or two calls before we call it tonight the empress thank you very much uh for your super chats i mean you've always been that generous and i appreciate you uh just like i appreciate everyone else uh on this uh, platform so thank you and don't go anywhere when i get back i'll take uh, one or two more calls and we can call it tonight whatever i miss please help me or remind me once you call in uh one moment Jay, 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 help us, help us. There is God. There is God. 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 God should descend today. God will descend here. Nigerian women will not cry in vain. Nigerian women will not cry in vain. This thing will end today. My sisters, if my child, if your child lost, will you stay and keep quiet? Will you people stay and keep quiet? The president now is calling you, come, I want to help you. You don't want to appear. Will you get angry? No. Now the first lady is calling you, come, I want to help you. Come to find your, your child, your missing child. Will you keep quiet? No. Child, child, there is God. 
there is God. The plus we are sharing, there is God. There is God. There is God. There is God.